You're listening to The Corbett Report. After stepping down as mayor of New York City, Rudy Giuliani tried to launch himself as a national political leader on the back of the single defining event of his career. September 11th, September 11th. Terrorists or terrorism, September 11th. The flames of hell emanating from those buildings. September 11, fallen towers of the World Trade Center. Terrorists, September 11, 2001. In the end, he failed miserably, with voters immediately seeing his ploy for what it was. Base political pandering. 9-11 was bad. I agree with that. God, I can't believe how easy this is. But what many do not realize is that Giuliani's case is not just that of another ghoulish politician parading on the corpses of those who died on his watch for his own political gain. On the day of 9-11, while the remains of the Twin Towers and World Trade Center 7 were still smoldering, one of Mayor Giuliani's first concerns was clearing away the evidence from the crime scene. We were able to move 120 dump trucks out of the city last night, which will give you a sense of the work that was done overnight. It's wild out here. They just keep coming. Look. It doesn't stop. There's more. I think keep thinking it's at the end and it's not. Despite reassurances that the rapid removal of the evidence from Ground Zero was important for emergency access, this process went far beyond merely clearing a path for rescue workers. As Eric Lawyer, founder of Firefighters for 9-11 Truth, points out, the massive operation to haul away over 1.5 million tons of debris and to sell much of the steel to Chinese firm Bao Steel at discount prices was not just an overzealous approach to clearing the area, but was itself a crime. 9-11 was the greatest loss of life and property damage in U.S. fire history. This should have been the most protected, preserved, over-tested, and thorough investigation of a crime scene in world history. Sadly, it was not. What was it? Well, we know from their own admission, the majority of the evidence was destroyed. I, like Richard said, 22 years of experience, I've seen a lot of crime scenes, I've never seen anything like this in my life. <clears throat> I, was, I was out of the site, I saw trucks leaving faster than you know, anywhere I've ever seen, but I accepted it at the time, and for years, I accepted it because it was a recovery and rescue operation and that's normal to have something like that going again we never see anything like it but that was expected what I didn't know for years what was going on behind the scenes was that evidence was being destroyed when it was shipped off um, by their own admission um, Tower 7 investigation this investigation at Tower 7 had no physical evidence how do you investigate a crime when you've destroyed all the evidence it doesn't make sense um, they also admit that they refuse to test the explosives or to test for explosives or or residue of thermite now this is what I'm going to go into here just real quickly is there are national standards for an investigation that's what all of us are asking for an investigation that follows national standards and holds people accountable Needless to say, an investigation of the 9-11 crime scene following the national investigation standards has never been conducted, and never will be, as Giuliani oversaw the illegal destruction of the evidence itself. To add insult to this injury, in 2003, New York City medical examiner Charles Hirsch revealed that in the mad scramble to get rid of the crime scene evidence, human remains from the World Trade Center had been left at the Fresh Kills landfill where the debris was sorted and the steel was sold. In 2007, Eric Beck, a senior supervisor of the recycling facility that sifted the debris, admitted that some of those human remains ended up in a mixture that was used to pave roads and fill potholes in New York City. But as grotesque as such revelations are, they are not the most shocking part of Giuliani's 9-11 story. In the late 1990s, the mayor oversaw the creation of a state-of-the-art $13 million emergency command center to coordinate the city's disaster recovery and response efforts. Located on the 23rd floor of World Trade Center Building 7, just across Vesey Street from the Twin Towers, the center, dubbed by local press at the time as Giuliani's Bunker, included reinforced, bulletproof, and bomb-resistant walls, its own air supply and water tank, beds, showers to accommodate 30 people, and three backup generators. 
It could be used to monitor all of New York's emergency communications frequencies and was staffed 24 hours a day. And yet, remarkably, on the morning of 9-11, neither Mayor Giuliani nor any other city personnel or police or fire department officials were in the bunker after the Twin Tower strikes. As I told you guys before, it's very, it's very uh, funny. I was on my way to work and uh, traffic was excellent. I received a call that uh, a small Cessna had hit the uh, World Trade Center. And I was asked to go and uh, man the uh, Office of Emergency Management. Upon arriving into the OEM uh, EOC, we noticed that everybody was gone. I saw coffee that was on a desk. Still, the smoke was still coming off the coffee. I saw, I saw uh, half-eaten sandwiches. So why wasn't the mayor and the city's emergency personnel in the location that had been purpose-built for just such an event? According to Giuliani, they had been told to evacuate because they had been given a warning that the Twin Towers were going to collapse. A warning that was evidently not passed on to any of the emergency personnel that were still working in the buildings. I went down to the scene and we set up uh, headquarters at 75 Barclay Street, which was right there with the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, mm -hmm. the head of emergency management. And we were operating out of there when we were told that the World Trade Center was going to collapse. And it did collapse before we could actually get out of the building. So we were trapped in the building for 10, 15 minutes and finally found an exit got out, walked north, and took a lot of people with us. Giuliani, in his own words, has admitted that he was warned that the World Trade Center was going to collapse. This despite the fact that there was no possible way for this to be predicted in the first hour of the unfolding disaster. Even more incredibly, despite being given this warning, no effort was made to pass it on to the police, firefighters, and other responders who were still working in and around the buildings. When precisely was this warning given, and by whom? Why, despite acting on this warning himself, did Giuliani make no effort to pass the warning on to others? Predictably, when confronted with these questions by activists during his 2008 presidential campaign, Giuliani merely smiled and denied that he had ever received such a warning. You reported to Peter Jennings that on 9-11 that the World Trade, the towers were going to collapse and, <clears throat> excuse me, no steel structure in, the, in, the, in history has ever collapsed due to a fire. How come the people in the buildings weren't notified and who, who else knew right. about this and, yeah. and how do you sleep at night? Ma'am, I didn't know that the towers were going to collapse. So you reported it to Peter Jennings. Jennings. No, no. no. You said and, out to Peter Jennings on ABC and video, also, you indeed said that the towers, uh, you were notified the towers were going to collapse while you were in some, um, not, sh not sure exactly where you were prior to, but you said on ABC video with Peter Jennings in an interview um, that you were aware that the towers were going to collapse in advance. We'd like to know who told you the towers were going to collapse in advance, sir. And also we'd like to know who else you told. Well, the fact is that... Uh, I didn't realize the towers would collapse. I never realized that. So where was the mayor on 9-11? On Pier 92, which was already set up as a functional command center due to a full-scale emergency drill by FEMA that, by a remarkable coincidence, had been scheduled for the following day. And we selected Pier 92 as our command center. And the reason Pier 92 was selected as the command center was because on the next day, on September 12th, Pier 92 was going to have a drill. It had hundreds of people here, from FEMA, from the federal government, from the state, from the state emergency management office, and they were getting ready for a drill for biochemical attack. So that was going to be the place they were going to have the drill. The equipment was already there. So we were able to establish a command center there within three days that was two and a half to three times bigger than the command center that we had lost at Seven World Trade Center. And it was from there that the rest of the search and rescue effort was, um, was completed. Mayor Giuliani oversaw the illegal destruction of the 9-11 crime scene and is criminally liable for the deaths of hundreds of emergency workers for not passing on prior warnings about the collapses of the Twin Towers. 
It is no wonder, then, that the Fire Department of New York so passionately detest Giuliani for his actions in disgracing their fallen brothers and covering up the 9-11 crime. Rudy Giuliani has used the horrible events of September 11, 2001 to create a carefully crafted persona. But the fact is what Rudy portrays is not a full picture of the decisions made that led, in our view, to the unnecessary deaths of our FDNY members and the attempt to stop the dignified recovery of those lost. The urban legend of America's mayor needs to be balanced by the truth. So what is the reward for Giuliani's criminal actions on 9-11? An offer to become the head of the Department of Homeland Security in the event of a Trump presidency, of course. This is the state of American politics, and this is precisely why a true investigation of what happened on 9-11 never has, and never will, be conducted by the U.S. government itself.